Celtics beat the Heat 114-94 in Game 1 on Sunday, but all the talk afterward was about Caleb Martin's hit on Jason Tatum. Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe is reporting that according to a league source, the NBA is not expected to review the Caleb Martin foul on Tatum for a flagrant or a suspension. Martin delivered a mid-air body check on Tatum in the fourth quarter. Tatum fell awkwardly on the ground, but got up quickly. Virtually appeared to avoid any serious injury, made both his free throws. Here's what Scalvo had to say about the play during post-game Live. Eric Spolster called a timeout with a minute 30, down by 16. 30 seconds later, that play happens. Well, that looks shady to me. I didn't like that. And you go at the best player? I mean, that's, to me, it's a dirty play. Like, I think Martin should get suspended for that. That's a dirty play. The idea of winning a championship is your star players have to stay healthy. And you just, the guy goes up and you just ram into him? That ain't basketball. Did he go for the rebound? Did he jump? It wasn't over the back. He trucked him. That's weak. How what you didn't hear there is that he said they ordered the code red. Eddie hasn't seen a few good men all the way through, but we told him it's worthwhile. Eddie House is here. So is Tom Giles. They were on post game live yesterday. Was it intentional? Let's just take a look back. Like now that you've had a day to digest it, look at a number of different replays. Was it a code red? Was it intentional? What do you think of the play? Well, the timeout and the way that it happened, the, the sequence of the timeout and then it happening makes it look like possibly that was it. But if you look, Drew Holiday gave him a slight shove. And your momentum going in, I, I don't think it was intentional because I think if Jason Tatum knew that, you know, there was an issue, the very next play down on the court, they get tangled up. Yep. And they're, and it's cool. It's nothing said. It's like, hey, man, you good? Everybody good? I think that they're, they have history there that he knows that he wouldn't do something to hurt him like that. But looking at it live and with all the circumstances, what it led up to, the steps that led up to this, sounded like, felt like, smelled like, it was something that could have been, what did he call it? Code, Code red. red. Code red. It could have been one of those, but I, I don't think so. I don't think that he intentionally went to go body check. I think the shove to help him go in that direction. He was running initially to go get the rebound. The shove uh, pushed him towards Jason Tatum. And luckily and thankfully, you know, nothing's wrong with Tatum. And we move on. We get ready for uh, Wednesday. It's yep. like everything. It's like it depends what angle you look at it from, right? Like I feel like some of the angles looked like he went in and kind of hip checked him. But the other ones, it just looks like maybe he just, you know, kind of went in to go hard and just well, so a little klutzy. That's it. I think that he did want to go in there and impose his will physically. And, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I almost called the Drew Holiday more of a nudge. Than a shove, you know what I mean? I was like, he, he kind of maybe guys up there, but I, no, I think kidding. that I think that Caleb Martin was coming in. It's coming in pretty hot in that situation where you're at in the game. Uh, I just think that he probably hit him harder than he even intended to as well, that, because I, I think the reaction there where he's kind of like, oh, I'm gonna try to pick you up right away. I, my favorite part though is that. Jason Tim's like, no, nah, I'm not about this. I'm just going to get right back up. And if that's the best shot you got, then don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to get right back up off the floor. Yeah, well, I think he just realized at that time that if it was a dirty – he didn't – I don't think he even realized who did it to him. He just said, you know, let me get up. I'm not involved in this. I'm getting down. going to shoot these two free throws. I'm okay. I'm not hurt. He might have felt it a little bit uh, this morning. But for the, for the fact that he just bounced up, didn't even look around who did it and just went straight to the free throw line, just, just let me know that he wasn't too much worried about it. And, and again, when your momentum, if you start to run, right, you, you, you sprint this way, and I'll give you a little, you're going to change your, you know, you, you, it's going to change a little bit. And I think that's, that's really what it was. It, I don't think it was nothing malicious, really. You know, I don't know at the time, everybody's emotions are high. You but know, do you think, game one. If, you, if you think it wasn't malicious, though, do you think that Miami's like, you know what, though, this isn't the worst thing in the world? I do think that. You know, they're, they're like, yeah, let's, let's, that's okay. Yeah, I do think that. And then also you could play on that. If him and Caleb Martin are cool, which Caleb Martin is from North Carolina, Jason Tatum obviously went to Duke, which is in North Carolina. I'm quite sure they crossed paths many a times, right? And they seem like they're cool with each other. That's a, that's a card you could play. Let's, you, I got your guard down. Like, man, I, man I, you, we cool, you know what I mean? And then do little stuff on the, the – the, the, like, I thought we was cool. I thought we were okay. I, you know, I thought we was just playing basketball and then you chained it somewhere else. Could make somebody's mind – you know, it, it make you think a little different. So I, I, I feel like they got to pull everything out of uh, – every rabbit out the hat that they can, the Miami Heat, because they don't have – I don't think they stand a chance roster-wise, yeah. you know.
So Scal said on the broadcast yesterday, on the, uh, the post-game broadcast, that he thought it should be a, it's suspension worthy, as we just heard the report. <laughs> you laugh a little, Eddie. Um, so you don't think it should be, and the league is going to make the right decision. Just look at it, not even look at it, just move on to game two. I mean, you take a look at it if you want to take a look at it, but I don't think that is something that was suspension worthy. Yeah, that's our best player. Um, if, if that same play happened, I want to know this. Would we be reacting to that if that same play happened to, say, Nemus Kata? Yeah. Well, we'd be like, oh, my God, that should, he be, should be suspended. No, it's because at the time of the game, we're up 20 points, almost 20, what was it, 16 at the time? Yeah. We're up 16, uh, a minute and 30 left, or under a minute and 30, and it happens to your best player. Well, so that's he, something that raises eyebrows. Well, the other thing, too, is that if Jason Tatum does get hurt on that play, then I think that they do. I mean, I, I think the result right. matters in this situation. It matters that Jason Tatum got up, went to the other end of the floor, hit a couple of free throws, stayed in the game, went back down to the floor. He obviously got fouled again by Caleb Martin uh, on the three-point shot. If he gets hurt in that situation, I think they do look at it differently. But, but if J.D. Davidson is out there and it happened to him, are they going to look at it and try to suspend no. Caleb Martin? See, so I'm saying. So, Probably not. Yeah, so then really – you got, you know, what I mean, it's like, okay, Dan, I don't, I don't, you know, it I might not I, even look nothing. at if it happened to Derek White or Drew Holiday, right? Like, if it's no, not, they, Jason, they're starters, they're starters, starters, but not the, the star, right? In, right. In, a, in meaningless minutes of a game. You mentioned that you liked how Jason Tatum handled it afterwards. I think I also said something to all of us that uh, Jalen Brown and Chris Tapps Porzingis went right over there, kind of got into it. Jason Tatum had to go over to, to JB and kind of give him a little fist pump and pull everybody away. Does this linger now? Even even though it wasn't maybe intentional and it's not suspension worthy, does that little dust up linger for the rest of the well, series? Well, if something else happens, if there's something else that's borderline, I don't care if, if it's close to the line of was that, did they do that on purpose? Then it changes everything. Then, you know, uh, then you got to send in your bruisers. Then somebody, somebody's going to get go to the go to the hole and get hit upside the head. It's going to be a hard foul. It's going. I mean, at least that's the, the era that I came from. Like that's what would happen if there's anything close to the line where you think that that was a dirty play or not then things are going to start happening. I also think that it's not the last time we're going to see the Celtics up by 25, 30 points. In a I'm game. with you with that. So th that scenario is going to come up again. And who's on the floor and, and how did the Miami Heat respond in that situation? That's, that's going to be interesting. Now you say you think they'll run away uh, again in the series, 20, 25 points. Is this, I don't want to say the series is over because that's pretty disrespectful to Miami, but it doesn't feel like they're even in the same stratosphere as the Celtics. Well, they don't have, the, they don't have any playmakers, number one. So you're looking for Tyler Hero to be a playmaker maker where he's looking to play make for himself. Bam Adebayo is their best playmaker, and, but you need him to be also the scorer. You can't have your big man be the facilitator, the scorer, and the rebound. I know he's not. Yeah, Jokic can do that. Jokic has a different type of, of team around him, um, but it, it's tough for them. Now, they, they, the buckets were hard for them to find. Mm -hmm. You know, when they scored, every basket that they got yesterday, I felt like was really, really tough. Yeah, I, I, I I think they have a really hard time keeping up with the Celtics uh, in every single game. Extra days off for you guys on the weekends because, we'll you see. know, we're hoping this goes real long. Enjoy the Bruins game tonight, you I big will. Bees fan, Let's Eddie go House. Bruins. Celtics do host the Heat in game two on Wednesday night. We, of course, will get you ready starting at 6 o'clock with Celtics pregame live. It is presented by TD Bank, and you can watch the game on NBC Sports Boston or stream it on the NBC Sports app and NBCSportsBoston.com.